this video we'll be talking about some of the great reasons to buy a home and maybe some not so great reasons. Make sure you stick around to the end because that last one is a really important one that I've been hearing a lot. You're not going to want to miss it. If this is your first time to our channel and you want to learn all about living in Richmond, Virginia, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, ring that cute little bell so you're notified every time we release a new video. So there are so many great reasons for wanting to buy a home. And I'm really fortunate that I've had a chance to experience all these great life events with so many clients over the years. And I just wanna to talk to you about a couple of those because I know they're ones that come up on a regular basis. And I know it's something that people think about and go, oh, is it the right time? Is it the wrong time? I don't know. You know, one of my favorite reasons that people come to me and are talking about buying a home is when there's just a coming together, a relationship, a marriage, there's a wonderful love that has been uh, formed that is happening. And I have people that call me and they're like, oh my gosh, we're getting married. We're so excited. Um, you know, we both have houses. We've both been saving up. We're both ready to find that perfect place together and really start our lives together. Is it a great time for us to buy a house? Tell us, what do we do? We just don't know what to do. And then what I'm gonna talk to all of my clients about or potential clients are like, first off, congratulations. This is really exciting. Tell me about your favorite part from your wedding or what are you looking most forward to for your wedding? I think it's always, um, I love it when I get to meet a couple and they both have houses that they need to sell and they're trying to time it just so. They've got the wedding coming up. They've got all the different things that are going up and they're trying to figure out that perfect time to, um, to uh, pull the trigger, to do what they need to do. And really when it comes down to it, is it the perfect time to buy a house if you're getting married, uh, particularly if each of your houses are just not ready to have another person and all their clothes and all their stuff all move into it, what do you do? And that's when I'm gonna say, well, you know, all the different things you hear about when you're gonna buy a house and all the things you did before when you bought a house are still important, but more importantly, it's gonna be, I wanna connect you with the right people. I wanna make sure you're speaking to the loan officers and that it's the right time and the right place for you to do things and that you are coming, having all the information. You know, when we sit down, we're looking at everybody's budgets. Yeah, you might be combining incomes. Yes, you're going to be able to afford a whole lot more house, but is it really the best thing for you to do? And many times it is, but we go look at all the steps and strategize things and really plan backwards for what you need to do. Um, I'm thinking about several different people right now and it was really exciting meeting them both already had found a home that they were building and it was awesome to be able to look at like oh the timing of what we need to do and exciting to see all their things all come together and it was super exciting because each of them it was really cute they privately kind of pulled me aside and said Aaron I want to make sure no matter what that they are doing the very best on their house so they have a little extra to do exactly what they want in the new house and then the other one pulled me aside and say I really wish that they're gonna be getting the very best. It really doesn't matter what I do. Um, it's so important for them. And it was so awesome to just watch how we were able to bring it all together and both of them did amazing. And I know that new house that we found them is going to be furnished beautifully. And more importantly, the pool that they're gonna be putting out back, that it is just going to be perfect now rather than having to shortchange things a little bit. Um, another wonderful one that is super exciting, particularly when I've watched people, you know, kind of work really hard. They've uh, gone back to school and gotten their MBA. Um, they've been uh, working a job that maybe they didn't love so much, but they have really pushed themselves and done what they need to do. And I get to hear back from them and they're like, oh my God, I've got that promotion that I've been working so hard for. Is it the right time? I'm ready to get that great big house. I've really been staying in this house way too long and um, it's time to live a little bit and to celebrate all my hard work. Is it the time? That's the best reason, isn't it? And I'm gonna say, I don't know. Let's look at a couple different things. Let's connect you with some stuff. Hey, let's talk about what your mortgage is right now. Uh, let's get you in touch with uh, a lender and making sure that the thing that you're envisioning, this all this house that you can get now, that it's really gonna be the right thing for you. And um, hey, the great thing also with a promotion is um, being able to open up these other neighborhoods that you've been dreaming about being in, that you actually can be in them now. You know, maybe you settled before. Now you don't have to settle. 
So one of the best reasons is you've got a promotion, you're making more money. I think that this is something that is always the best reason, no matter what market you're in, is I just want a house. I'm tired of renting. I'm tired of spending, um, you know, putting my hard-earned uh, money and paying someone else's mortgage. I'm tired of always being at someone's whim that if they decide, oh, I'm gonna sell the house, it's gone. I'm tired of them raising the rates on me. I'm tired of them saying, I can't have a dog, or I can have a dog, or I can have my pets. I just want a house. Is it the right time? Is this one of the, is it a good reason for me to go and buy a house? And once again, I'm gonna say it depends. All the things you're describing to me sound like things that go, hey, you've checked off all the boxes, you need to be a homeowner. You need to stop renting and spending all that rent somewhere else. But more importantly, let's connect you with the right people and let's really make sure that we know exactly what you're looking for and what you're expecting from a house, we're gonna be able to deliver it to you. And I'm really excited about, you know, there truly is a house out there. There's a neighborhood out there for everyone. And uh, for people who want a house, even if there aren't that many houses, you are going to find the right place for it. I love the people that reach out to me on a regular basis and talk to me about the house that they're living in now, that they're renting. And they tell me what their rent is. And they tell me all the things that they're looking for in a house and it's super, super exciting to hear that. Um, to get all the information about what they want to keep their mortgage payment at and, and already visualize right off the bat. Even if I don't know the exact same uh, exact house, I can tell you this. Very first time that I talk to people, usually I'm putting that neighborhood out to them and damned if they're not going to be uh, moving into that neighborhood. I just have a way of visualizing it and knowing where they want to be and it's super exciting when I get all that information and to know we can absolutely deliver to that. We have several calls a day from people just like you that are looking to move the Richmond, Virginia area. If that sounds like you, we would love to be the real estate team for you. All of our contact information is below the comments. Please reach out to us. We can't wait to hear from you. I think one of the best reasons to buy a home is particularly if you are looking to stay in a house for over five years, um, it really doesn't matter what market you're in it's going to be one of the best reasons for you to invest in real estate and find a place. Um, I've had several people that have reached out to me and have talked about, you know, when we've gone through and kind of mapped out a plan, we've done the buyer strategy session with them, and they've talked about how long they really wanna be in a home. And whenever I hear the key or the motivation of what they're looking for, you know, regardless if they've had a promotion, they're getting married, um, they just want a house, whatever. Particularly when I say about, you know, perfect world, if you were able to control everything, we obviously don't always have a crystal ball. How long do you think you'll be in this house? Inevitably, if I ever hear five plus, it doesn't matter what's going on, it's, it's going to be the right time for them to buy if they've got all the other places, things in place, um, if they've been saving the proper amount of money, if they have the right motivation, if they're um, excited about having a place of their own, if there's memories they can talk to me about, you know, being excited about the house they grew up in, they talk to me about, you know, what they were always excited about that their mom would do or their dad would do or brothers or sisters, you know, just all those great things and the, you know, what I really ask clients, you know, what does home ownership mean to you? Why is that important? Why are you thinking about doing this? And also, why do you think you're going to be in more than a certain amount of time? Again, we can't control all the different things that go on every year. Goodness knows, last three years we had a pandemic. We certainly weren't expecting that. So it's good when you know all that motivation. An important one that is near and dear to my heart is I am all about real estate being an investment. Sure. It's great that you have a home that you're going to be living in, but if you are willing and have the assets that you're going to be investing it back into properties and you know right off the bat, I'm not planning to live in this house, I'm going to keep it as a rental, do you think it's a time, good time for me to pick up that kind of investment property? What I say to anyone coming that way is like, it sure can be. Let's look at all the different aspects you're looking at. For instance, you know, um, what would you need to bring in each month for this to be a good investment. With any investment property, with any rental property, they say within the first five years, you know, if you can at least break even, you are already five steps ahead. But let's think about finding a situation where you are not just breaking even, but you're actually making a profit from the, um, the get-go. If that were the case, we know for sure it's a great time for you to buy a house and keep it as a rental. And let's make sure that we're 
positioning you properly in the market so that you don't just start with one, that you move on to others and you can use that money that you're bringing in from each to help invest back into other real estate properties. Um, several different clients that I've worked with over the years, even if they originally bought something as a, a primary house and that have turned it into a rental over the years, um, the great um, opportunities that that has opened for them and um, the situations and great stories that we've had along the way. Um, thinking of a couple different people that um, they bought something knowing that they were going to be investing and they were only just thinking about one. In fact, there was one that was a personal investment property of ours. It was really cool that we bought it. Tenant was uh, staying in place. Um, we happened to reach out to them and go, hey, did you want to move? Because we're actually looking to rent this out. And they said, uh, no, we're, we, we'd really like to stay. They stayed. We ended up selling the investment property to some of our great clients. The tenant stayed for them as well. And it was really exciting to see several years later, um, once that person moved out, we helped them buy a great house as well on the water and then helped our clients that had bought it, um, uh, run it out to some other places, uh, other people, and then the next people who bought it ended up using it for investment properties. So it's awesome to see how it will grow over the years. Let's just say, hey, we know right now in a market is, are you finding a ton of deals and steals? Not necessarily, however, there are definitely some wonderful properties out there that you can find. And I have people that are coming to me, they're like, hey, I own a property here, I love being in the neighborhood, I have some great skills, I wanna go ahead and, and buy up some properties that, hey, let's face it, maybe I feel like I'm gonna overpay for the house, um, but I know I'm planning to hold on to it, fix it up, and, and keep it. Um, and they asked me if that's a great idea, and particularly with what we've seen in appreciation of homes, I think it's a terrific idea. More importantly though, we wanna step back and go, okay, you're buying this home that needs work. That's terrific, okay, you have some skills. A lot of people come to me and they're like, I wanna get a fixer upper. I wanna fix it up and keep it. And we have to kind of just sit back and go, what do, you, what do you consider a fixer upper? Is a fixer upper something that you feel like, oh, hey, maybe I'm gonna change out some floors, or I'm gonna change the paint color, or you know, maybe I'm gonna put some new fixtures on it. That's not a fixer upper. And if you are truly trying to find that house that is going to be the greatest investment for you, you're probably gonna be looking for something that needs a whole lot more things. Like it's probably gonna need a roof, it's gonna need a windows, HVAC, um, you know, and there's probably gonna be bathrooms and kitchens that need to be gutted. So let's make sure that if that is the house that you're looking for, right? Is it a great reason? If you've got all those skills or you know someone that does and you guys can, um, buy it together, that would be a great option. Absolutely, buy a house, fix it up, keep it. It will be a terrific investment for you and be something that you'll get to enjoy and build your skills as well. So who knows, maybe that you can take that on to another property as well. So we've talked about a lot of the great reasons and the exciting reasons, the ones that are just near and dear to my heart that I really enjoy over the years. Let's talk about some times when it's just maybe not the best reason to buy a house. This is a big one. This is a big one and it's very important. I think it's extremely relevant today. Confidence is high among consumers. Um, everyone is coming to me and going, hey, my neighbor down the street, they bought a house. They just put, you know, I don't know. They just put a little bit of money, you know, they slap some paint on, changed the floors out and put some new fixtures on and they just walked away with all this money. You know, I want to do this. You know, I've got some extra money. I've got this bonus that just came in. Hey, I just got a promotion. I'm gonna go ahead and go in. And I watched this TV show, I couldn't sleep all night. And I, I watched about how you could do something with no money down, but I've got all this money. I'm just gonna go buy a bunch of different houses, Aaron, and, and we're just gonna flip them and make all, these, all this money, all this money. Is this a great decision? And I'm gonna step back and say, okay, have, well, for one, we know you've owned a house already, okay? You know, you have all this money. How much do you really have? And they'll be like, oh, you know, I have this. And really in the scheme of things, it's like, okay, you've got your house, you're going to be living in it, and your house obviously is gonna have things that are gonna to need to be updated throughout the time. How many times is that gonna get neglected because you've poured everything into the, all these flip properties and you've gotta do something? Let's also talk about we never have a crystal ball. Though there are no signs that things are gonna like just switch like crazy, what happens if the market softens? You've got all these flips, um, you know you've got to finish them, you can't leave them the way they are because now, let's say, there are not as many buyers in the market and you've just got all these properties and you're still going to move them. And let's say, even you're like, okay, maybe I'm not going to flip them, I'm just going to rent them out. Well, if the market has shifted a little bit and you still have things that are undone, 
You've either gonna be paying someone to do that or you've gotta finish them up because you still have to have things safe and up to code to rent them out. So before you go and just um, go, I, I bought this series uh, of books, I'm gonna go and flip all these houses, I'm gonna make millions and millions and millions of dollars of a residual income, let's step back and go, how much in reserve do you have set aside? Could you really, if something, if someone didn't pay your mortgage or you weren't able to sell those houses as fast as you needed to, or if you didn't make at least triple what you've invested into it, are you gonna be okay? All these things are really important, particularly, particularly a lot of people go, I've got all this money, but I'll just go and get a mortgage. You've gotta remember, I've gotta connect you with the lender and make sure that lender is talking to you about the difference between an investment property and what's required and a primary occupancy. It's a big difference and we wanna make sure you understand all that before you get yourself in a bad situation. So again, another one that is really important um, and a lot of people have come to me, they're like, hey, I just bought the house um, you know, two years ago, but I'm watching all my neighbors make crazy money on things. I think it's time for me to sell or let me go buy a house and, and uh, stay for a little less time. What should I do? Is that a great reason? And really, I'm gonna step in and go, it depends. We know that people can buy and sell houses and do okay, no matter what the market is. But really, what's your motivation? What are you trying to accomplish? And if somebody's saying, well, I figure if I buy this house for this, I'm gonna be able to make this much profit so I can turn around and invest it into this that's really important, or I can go put my kids completely through school from the money I'm making. Well, how is it important is it for your uh, kids to go to school? It's super important. It's something I've been dreaming for over and I've got them into this great school. I want to be able to pay for it and I'm going to do it for my profits. Let's make sure that things that are really important, if something went off wire, would you still be able to accomplish that thing that you've been promising or really been striving towards all your life? Oh, everybody has a neighbor. Everybody has an uncle. Everybody has a friend that has just made a quick profit. They bought a really crappy little place in an amazing neighborhood, and they're just convinced they're gonna make as much money as the person down the street. Let's say they don't even buy a crappy house. They buy a perfectly great home in that particular neighborhood, but they still think they're gonna make this amazing profit, but they settled a whole bunch on this house, and they just wanna go get that other house. Is it a good time? Aaron, you know, should I do this? Well, I can make all this money. Let me just go ahead and do this, so I can go get that house I really want to even if there isn't something on the market right now. Is it a good time? Let's just go ahead and get this. We'll make a good profit and I'll be ready to do it. Let's turn it back around and go, okay, um, don't have a crisp ball. Let's say that great job you have right now that's paying all this and gives you all the hours, you know, flexible hours so you can fix something up and do what it needs to do. What if that changes? Yeah, you've been working from home for uh, three years now because of the pandemic and you've got all this extra time so you can do all these projects. What if that changes? Like so many of my friends and clients right now, they're all going back to office again. And all of a sudden they had all this time to do all, this pro all these projects, they don't anymore. So how is, how is that gonna work? Is it really gonna make a big difference for you? The other thing is, hey, your money that you used to buy something to make a great profit before, your interest rates are going up, is it really gonna be where you need to be in order to buy that next house? You're ready to make this great profit, a real quick profit, just pick something up, do whatever. And let's talk about this though. Let's say the market changes and you've put all of your money into this particular house, right, to make a great profit. And all of a sudden your house isn't worth what it was before. Is that going to devastate you financially? Is that gonna make you have to make some very drastic changes? Um, if that's the case, not a great reason for you to just buy something because you think you can really make a great profit, a quick profit, not the right time. So somebody comes to me and they want to buy a house because they feel like they can make a quick profit on it. They've watched it happen so many times over and they know the neighborhood and I know the neighborhood. What am I going to say to them? What I'm going to say to them for one is I'm going to ask them some really simple questions. And the big important one would be, we don't have a crystal ball, right? We don't know exactly what's going to happen. And sure, we can look at A, B, C, and D. All these people seem to be doing really well, and yeah, they did make a quick profit, sure. But let's say the market shifts a little bit, right? And it slows down a little bit. And everything you put in that particular property, let's say the value of your home drops substantially, would you be devastated? 
And if that potential buyer says yes to me, I would say, if it were me, I wouldn't do it. Talk to your financial advisor, get everything all together. I'm here to help you find a house. I can help you find a great home that should meet all your needs. But it's really important that you step back and think about those key questions. Because if the answer is yes right off the bat, it's not the best reason for you to buy. Buyers will often come to me, particularly in the market that we're in right now, and they're like, hey, things just keep on going crazy. I'm gonna get a house. I'm just super excited. I just want a house. I'm gonna buy a house. And I know by next year, it's gonna be like, you know, I'm gonna buy this house for 600,000. By next year, it's gonna be worth 800,000. Perfect. And I'm gonna step back and go and ask them a question for one, back to everything. Why are you buying a house? Why is it important to you? Why is it important to you if you've already told me you're planning on staying in the house for five plus years, what does it matter what it's worth next year? Because you're planning on staying in it, just so you have bragging rights at the weenie roast. I mean, what is it? Always, always, always look back. And I, and I think that this is, no matter what market it is, when people even call me about renovating their house, really? And hey, I'll do this. I saw my neighbor did that, so I'm gonna make this great profit. Well, are you even planning on selling your house? Well, no, 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 I'm not selling my house. So really, what we need to look at more importantly is, why are you fixing up? Are you planning to enjoy it? Because anything you do to a house, anytime you buy a house, you wanna buy a house. Yes, you wanna be thinking about resale. That is important. You know, looking at the schools, looking at the neighborhood, looking at the area, you know, location, location, location. You know, we always say that, and it's so true. But more importantly, when anyone buys a house, why are you buying a house? Why is that important? And anything you're planning on doing to it, that's great. But always do things first and foremost for yourself, right? And you also don't ever want to improve a house out of a neighborhood, right? If everyone has a pool in the neighborhood and you're planning to put a pool in, awesome. But if no one has a helipad in the neighborhood and you're planning on putting on there because you think that's going to like be great for resale value, that's very specific to a particular kind of clientele. And particularly when the market shifts, if it shifts, maybe that's not gonna be so appealing to a whole bunch of people. So always do those improvements. If you're, if you're getting a house, and you think, oh, it's gonna be worth something else the very next year, that's all well and good, but if you're not planning on selling that house, what does that really matter? Make sure you get a home that you love. Make sure that it has the things that you're really going to enjoy. The improvements you're gonna do are for you. And more importantly, that you're doing improvements that, are the, that fit with the neighborhood. Because if you don't, it's never gonna be a great reason for doing something. Don't think just because the market keeps on going crazy and because it's been like this for a couple years that you can do anything you want and ask for whatever price you want because the principles of real estate, they stay the same. They stay the same. And what I say to all my potential buyers and sellers, the value of a home is what a buyer is willing to pay and a seller is willing to accept for compensation, period. Doesn't matter what kind of market we're in. So keep all those things in mind. If you're considering as a good reason that I'm going off of to buy a house, or if it's a not so great reason, a bad reason, all of those things come back to that. Once again, if this is your first time tuning into our channel and you will learn all there is about living in Richmond, Virginia, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and make sure to hit that cute little bell so you'll be notified every time we release a new video. Thanks so much for joining us and remember, leave everything better 